So you know how a lot of times you'll come to YouTube because you want to watch an expert do something and you want to learn how to do it from them? Yeah, this is so not that kind of video. We're going to be learning together today. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today we're going to be making a book in the easiest way I know how. Now I've made books before. This is actually one that I made for our family. Um, it's a journal of sorts. It's just kind of a family journal. We put the big stuff, the little stuff, all that kind of stuff in here and save it for uh, upcoming generations. But this book right here, it took 30 to 40 hours to make that book. The one we're going to be making today took me about five to six hours, somewhere around in there. Probably would have been four hours if I hadn't been filming. And the majority of that time was with the pyro kit. So what is pyrography? Well, first of all, it's a mouthful. So from this point forward, I'm either gonna refer to it as pyro or the pyro kit, one of the two, but just know I'm talking about pyrography. And the short version is, it's a wood burning kit that you can use on leather to burn a design into the leather. And that's the technique that we're gonna be using today to add the design to this project. And this is the part that I was talking about when I said that I'm not an expert in this technique. Uh, I've done two small projects. One of them's on the shelf up here uh, behind me. It's the fantasy map that we did a few months ago. Other than that, I really don't have any experience with this technique. What I'd like to do is kind of bring you along for the, the ride, bring you along for the journey, and we can learn together. So the project that we're doing today really incorporates one skill, and that's going to be line work. And I know there's a lot of it, but it's not overly complicated as long as you go slow. And really, if I can do this with almost no experience, anybody can do this. So this is the finished version of the project that we're gonna be working on today. And to do this, the main elements of this, not counting the tools, but the main building blocks of that project, you need a piece of leather that's between three and four ounces, right in that range. You need a second piece that we're gonna use as a liner, one to two ounces. You need a pyrography kit. If that doesn't work, you could probably do this project with a swivel knife, although there are some parts that are a little complicated. Uh, you need a journal that's roughly a half inch thick. The overall dimensions of it really don't matter as long as they're bigger than the pieces of leather that we're gonna be using, but you want it to be at least a half inch thick. And on top of that, you'll need the pattern, which there's a link for in the description. We'll need other tools too, but those are the main things you're gonna need to make this project. So the pyro kit that we're gonna be using today, you can get one from Weaver. The one that I recommend is the one that has the adjustable temperature with it. It has a control box, it's got a knob up front, you can adjust the temperature on it. Um, the wand itself, it has a, a guard here to make sure that your hand doesn't get hot. Now you can slip past that and burn it, but as long as you keep your hand there, you'll be fine. Then it comes with four different tips and a way to remove those tips while they're hot. So second thing, real quick, Y'all have mentioned in a few of the videos in the comment section that y'all would like to see a little bit longer format than the typical 15 to 20 minute video that you might see. So that's what we're going to do today. You're going to have the teaching segment and we're also going to have what we'll call the project segment where, you know, I just kind of sit back, stop talking, work on the project, put a little background music on, and y'all just kick back, relax, and watch the project kind of come to life. Y'all let me know in the comment section if y'all if you like that, if you want to see more of that, because we can definitely incorporate more of that if that's what you're interested in. So as we get started here, one of the things I found is that moisture is a really big deal. If the leather is going to be more on the dry side, what you're going to get is more of a burning and scorching. Sometimes you want that. If it's wetter, you're going to get more of a melting and cutting. Because we're mostly doing line work here and I wanted a thin, crisp line, I started with the sharp tip. I just turned it up on its side. That gave me basically a knife's edge.
At this point, I wanted to try one of the other tips, you know, to see if it worked better, to see what kind of effect it would give me. So I swapped it out for the round tip. It's got what looks like kind of like a tiny little BB on the end of it. And what I found is that the round tip opens the cut up, which is really good. Uh, but the downside is that it's not as crisp. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. One of the things that I found while I was doing the research for this is that the more you use the tips, the more they burn in. It's kind of like seasoning a pan. The better they get, the better they work. So the further along you go with the tip, the better they're going to work. And I found that to be the case.
With that, the pyro stage of this project is done. It took about two hours to do what you've seen so far. So there was about an hour to trace and transfer the pattern onto the leather, and then about another hour, maybe hour and 15 minutes, something like that, to actually burn the design into the leather. Now we can start working on the book. So obviously this random shaped piece of leather that we've got here, it's not gonna work very well for a book cover. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our wing dividers. We're gonna set them to a quarter inch and we're gonna put two to three marks on all four sides of the design. And there's a border that runs all the way around it. Use that as your guide. All right, so once you've got that done, you should know where you're gonna be cutting. So we can grab a straight edge and very carefully go in and cut along those cut lines that we just created and cut out the cover for our book. When it comes to the corners, my favorite thing to use are the corner knives from Weaver. Now, I understand not everybody has one. If you want to get your own, they are amazing. We'll put a link in the description. But if you don't have one of those, you can just make a series of small cuts all the way around and kind of nip at that corner, and eventually you can round it out. It's not too bad. So the next step is one of those that I skipped for a very long time. I really thought it was just one of those things that needs to be done every six to 12 months. And to be honest, I wasn't very good about doing it then. And that is stropping your bevel. Totally makes sense that this, it's a cutting edge. It needs to be stropped. It needs to be honed just like your swivel knife. So for me, the rule that I've decided on, and it works really well for me, is that I'm going to briefly strop it before I use it on any project. And really, that has made a huge difference in how well my bevel works. Okay, so a quick tip that I've got for you on using a bevel. Have you ever had a situation where it doesn't want to get started? Once it starts, it's fine, but it doesn't want to get started. So my trick for that is to put your thumb behind it and put a little bit of pressure on the bevel with your thumb, and that little bit of motivation will get it running, and then you're good to go. So now that we've got that done, you can set the cover aside. We'll come back to it a little later. Now we're going to start working on the journal itself. And to do this, you can use any journal that you want as long as it's roughly a half inch thick. Now, the height and width really doesn't matter. And that might not make sense at first. But what we're going to be doing, I want to give it a deckled edge. A deckled edge is where the edges of the paper have that real ragged, rough look. It's a very old school look. So what we're gonna do to create that edge is essentially we're gonna rip the edges of the paper off. Well, if we're ripping it anyway, we can take as much or as little off as we want to, which means we can size the journal to the cover that we just made. So we're just gonna start by cutting off the cover. There's a piece of paper that should bind the cover to the deck, and that can be removed pretty easily just with a razor blade. So if you'll cut through that carefully, the cover should come right off. So now that we've got the original cover off the book, we can start fitting our cover to it. And the way we're gonna do this is just start by putting a little bit of moisture evenly across our cover that we just created. That's gonna loosen the leather up a little bit, make it bend easier so that we can start conforming the cover to the deck. So while you're starting to fit and mold the cover to the book, one of the things you wanna pay attention to is that design on the spine. That's how you're gonna make sure that it's lined up correctly. Now we're going to mark where we want to tear the pages, and the easiest way to do this is just to use the border of the design as our guide. So once that's done, we're going to grab our wing dividers, set them to the same width as the marks that you just created on the page. That's what we're going to end up using as a guide to tear these pages. But one thing I'll mention to you, we're going to need these multiple times, so don't close them up and set them aside. Just leave them the way they're set 
Set them aside. We'll be back to these very frequently during this portion of the project. Once we've got our marks, we're going to use a straight edge as our cutting edge. Now, this can be a little bit of a challenge if you get too ambitious and grab too many pages. So what I recommend is just grabbing two pages at a time and then pulling them against the straight edge. That'll give you a nice straight edge while still creating that deckled edge that we're looking for. You're going to want to reset every 10 to 15 pages. And what I mean by reset is after you've torn 10 to 15 pages, open the book up, rescore the page with your wing dividers, put your straight edge down and start over. It just makes the whole process a lot easier. So once we get that edge done, we're going to repeat the process with the top and bottom. So mark your lines, use the wing divider to score your line, use a straight edge, and then start ripping. One thing I would tell you is don't try to rush the process. There's really no way to speed it up. So it's going to be what it'll be. Just kind of sit back and enjoy the process. It gives you a great effect once you're done. It just takes a little bit of time. So now we can actually start adding some color to this thing. And I'm going to be using Phoebe's Antique Paste. And I just want a light kind of brown color to it, maybe just a hint of red in there. So I'm going to be using Cordovan from Phoebe's. Typically, you would hear me say, okay, we need to seal it first, then we'll antique it. But in this case, because I'm going for an older look, I want the antique to add a little bit of tint and color to the actual leather itself. So I'm going to wait to seal it until after I antique it. And to do that, I'm just going to use a chip brush. And it's 50 cents at a big box store. But if you don't have one of those, you can use a dauber. You can use a sponge. You can even use a paper towel in a pinch. But it's not really recommended. Once you get a good coat on there, you can go ahead and wipe it off with a paper towel. You don't even have to let it sit very long. We're just trying to get a light tint and let it settle down in those, uh, those marks that we made with the pyro kit earlier. After you've buffed it really good and got off all the residue that you can get off, we're going to let it sit for 20, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. Then we're going to go back and add a sealer to it. I prefer tan coat. It works really well. It's the one that I have the least amount of problems with, so it's my go-to. But if you have another one you like, you can use it too. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit on a paper towel, buff it into the leather really good. It's going to do two things for us. One, it's going to lock that color down in those burn marks that we made with the pyro kit. And two, it's going to lift off any residue that may still be sitting on top of the leather. While that's drying, let's go ahead and get our liner leather out. That's what we're going to be using to attach the pages to the cover. So we're just going to start by cutting out a piece of leather that's a little bit bigger than the actual cover of our book, maybe an inch all the way around. What this is going to do for us is as we're getting ready to attach the liner to the cover, we've got more of a margin for error. We've got, you know, we've got extra so we can cut it off if we need to. It doesn't have to be lined up perfectly. Once we've got it cut out, we can go ahead and take the, the pages, insert it into the leather and start molding that leather around the page deck. What this is going to do is going to create creases where the spine is, and that's going to tell us where we need to glue. I'm going to use a straight edge that will really help me define those creases where the spine's going to go. And what that's going to do for me, not only does it tell me where the glue goes, but it's also going to tell me where the antique should go and where it shouldn't go, because we don't want that antique getting up in there where we're going to be gluing. It could cause problems.
Once the antique's dry, we're gonna take our page deck, we're gonna sit it in that spine that we marked out earlier. We're gonna take a pencil and really narrow in where the glue needs to be. So we're gonna put marks on each end of it, maybe tip the page deck up just a little bit so we can get just barely inside the, the width of the spine. And that's where we're gonna be applying our contact cement. Once that's done, we're also going to apply the glue to the spine of the deck. So I wanted to point out real quick, I've always called these the stack of paper a deck. Technically, it's called a text block, but for some reason, I've always called it a deck. I don't know why or how I picked that up. But if you wondered what I'm talking about when I say attach the deck, it's the text block. It's the stack of pages in here. Um, I'll try to make sure I call it a text block going forward, but uh, I thought I'd throw that out there just in case you were wondering what I was talking about. So the glue that we just put on the liner and on the spine of the text block, that has to kind of cure a little bit if it needs to shift from being wet to more tacky. So we're gonna set that aside for just a second and put the first coat of glue on the inside of our cover. We just wanna be careful to keep the glue off the spine because really what we need is for that spine to gap from the text block. That's gonna allow the book to open and not really fight us. To make sure that we don't get any glue where the spine is gonna sit, the easiest way to do this before we start adding glue is just to gently fold the cover closed, take a pencil and very lightly mark the edges of where the, the cover starts to bend. That gives us our guide on where we can put glue and where we shouldn't. So to make sure that we don't get glue on the spine, let's start by painting the glue in a straight line right down those marks we just created. That's gonna act as our border. Also, I want you to notice, as I'm painting the glue in, I'm working from the center out, never from the outside in. By going from the center out, we limit the chance of the glue wrapping around to the front and ruining our project. Also want you to notice that I'm picking the cover up just a little bit as I get to the edge. I don't wanna lay it flat because then I can be painting the glue onto the surface and then smear the project through it. It's a great way to ruin the front of your project. So while I'm doing this, I wanted to mention, I wouldn't ordinarily glue with contact cement indoors, but I wanted to be able to show you on camera because it, it is a little bit of a process and I wanted you to be able to see it. So I have tons of ventilation in this room. The door's blocked up so the air really has a hard time getting out and I'm wearing a full face respirator. So I'm as safe as I can be while still getting this on camera and showing you the whole process. Once we're done with that, you should be able to go back and add a second coat of glue to the liner and the spine of the text block. Set those aside, let them dry until they're tacky. Once that's done, we wanna go back, we're gonna mark another gluing line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the spine, we're gonna go about a quarter inch off on each side, and that's gonna be the area with inside, inside that where we don't put any glue. So you remember how I told you we created those lines so we could create a border so that we wouldn't glue past that? Yeah, I got in a hurry and totally forgot about that and didn't follow my own advice at all and totally glued all the way up to the spine. Now, thankfully I caught it before it cured. It was really, really wet at this point. So I just squeegeed it off as best I could, but I kind of dodged a bullet on that one. So as you're painting the glue in, you want to take it all the way up to the edge. That's going to help make sure that there's no gapping once we put this thing together. Once you've got that done, you can put a second coat on one side of the cover. Don't put it on both sides yet, it's just one side of the cover.
Then we're going to come back and put a second coat on that same side of the liner. So once they're both tacky, we're at the second big hurdle, and it's really a make or break moment for the project. So I'm going to encourage you to take your time. And by that, what I want you to focus on is when you put them together, the, the back of the spine should meet the spine of the cover where there's no glue. You want that to be as centered and as square as possible. Then when you go to lay the cover together with the, the liner on the inside, you want to do it as with as much confidence and as little hesitation as possible. So take your time. You might need a second set of hands right there with you just in case you need some help. So you might wanna have a friend in the room, maybe a spouse in the room or something like that when you go to do this, because reality is you really only get one shot to do it. Now, I apologize for getting a little off camera here. I was really focused on making sure that I got it lined up correctly and I forgot to watch the monitor to make sure I was in the camera shot. Uh, I've got a better shot of this when we do the other side, so just hang tight with me for just a second. Once that's done, we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So you can breathe now, we're past the tough part. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab our craft blade and we're gonna start cutting along the edge of the journal. Be careful not to bite into the journal itself, um, but we're just gonna trim off the excess liner that we, we had there to give ourselves a little bit of margin for error. So at this point, we've got a lot of fumes coming off the book because of the glue. So I wanted to take it out back, set it on some patio furniture and let the sun kind of cook those fumes off of it. Well, what I didn't realize is that I set it down in a little bit of water. Well, this ordinarily would have been an absolute disaster. I would have had to start over. But because this book, we're wanting to make it look aged and old, the water staining on the back actually works really well. Now, it is this project only. If it was another one, it probably wouldn't have worked. But for this project, it worked really well, so I just left it and ran with it. Now we can move on to the edges. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take some sandpaper. I'm using some pretty heavy grit sandpaper here. And we're gonna buff out any imperfections on the edge that we might have created while we were trimming off that excess liner. Once you've got that done, we can either grab our token oil or our gum trag and we can start slicking the edges. So at this point, you've got an actual book and you can stop right here. It's beautiful. You don't have to do anything else to it. But if you're like me, you want to push it a little bit further. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're gonna take it and we're gonna weather it so it looks like it's a couple of hundred years old. But that's the next video. That'll do it for this one. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, go make something amazing.